Uh, thank you very much, uh, Erica. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks uh, to you again, and welcome to London Zoo. Uh, a number of you commented. Uh, <laughs> A number of you have commented in the last couple of weeks how appropriate it is that LBS uh, should host an event here of all places, uh, which I think is a very unfair thing to say uh, given how different the two institutions are. One has outrageously expensive entrance prices, <laughs> a vast team of keepers trying to maintain absolute control, and inmates who often don't seem to do very much other than sit around and occasionally attempt to have sex with each other. <laughs> The other is, of course, London Zoo. <laughs> now, when I was first uh, nominated to give this speech, uh, I was, of course, uh, deeply, deeply horrified. Um, as those many of you from overseas will have noted over the last two years, this is an extraordinarily repressed uh, and emotionally stunted nation. Um, <laughs> So, the very thought of standing in front of my peers and reflecting on our collective feelings was my idea of an exquisitely personalised hell. <laughs> However, on reflection, I am very, very humbled indeed to be here. We all first met as a class exactly 679 days ago today, when 406 individuals walked into the Queen Elizabeth Conference Centre and immediately started asking what 405 other people had done before the MBA. <laughs> By the end of that day, we had also met our study groups, those strange little teams which would form our world for the first few months. We promised one another that we would not be social loafers. We swore by all that we held dear to honour our study group contracts. <laughs> to the very end. And we all believed sincerely that no less than five of us in each study group would probably end up on the Dean's list. <laughs> A number which in our case at least was quickly adjusted down to four once I found out that I failed glam. <laughs> As the warm summer days turned into what for many of you appeared to be the most brutally cold temperatures that you had ever encountered, the bonding began. Before this MBA, I used to think that really close teams could only form under the stresses of combat. I know now that sitting in AG10 at 11 o'clock at night, trying to finish the Boeing case while the only member of your study group with any finance experience is lying face down on the floor of the Windsor, <laughs> has a similar effect. <laughs> I used to think that true courage could only be found in battle. I know now, standing in front of the DEO professor and asking whether your idea for a nationwide chain of sex hotels could go into the S LBS incubator is the bravest thing I will ever see. <laughs> they were extraordinary days. Of course, our study group had its share of discord, of bitter, bitter personal vendettas, <laughs> of long periods where everyone flatly refused to meet and all study group business was conducted at arm's length by email because we couldn't even stand to be in the same room as each other. Which study group doesn't? Most of the other ones. Uh, <laughs> But lifetime friendships were formed, and it was an experience which none of us will ever forget. So to all the study groups, well done. But study groups need something to study, and for that we must thank the academic staff. It can have been no easy task to teach a class whose experience ran all the way from Wall Street whiz kids to those who, like me, thought that an American-style option meant deciding whether or not to go large at Burger King. <laughs> teach us they did. They were there when we struggled. They were there when we challenged them. And in stream A's GBE class in the first year, they were even very occasionally there by 8.15 in the morning. <laughs> in many cases, their sheer enthusiasm and humour managed to make even the most challenging of subjects halfway enjoyable, albeit in a rather perverse way. 
So thank you to the financial accounting faculty for hammering the principle of revenue recognition into our heads for just long enough to ensure we scrape through the exam and never have to recognise it ever again. <laughs> thank you to the operations management team for explaining to the 91% of you who are not born in this country how a bloody Q should work. <laughs> To the strategy professors, thank you just for being there. <laughs> and for allowing so many of the class of MBA 2014 to fill so much airtime with so little substance and so little fear of ever being told they were in any way wrong. In all seriousness, their efforts have been genuinely appreciated. So too have those of the Programme Office. Without wishing to stretch the London Zoo analogy too far, were you to take 400 of their squirrel monkeys, then give each of them an iPhone, and the firm belief that their elective choices were much more important than those of all the other squirrel monkeys, it would perhaps approximate what the Programme Office sometimes had to deal with. In our defence, I can only offer an answer to the question that you posed us at the beginning of the MBA. Are we customers, colleagues, or friends? At the time, you left the answer up to our imagination. Having thought about it for 679 days, I've decided that I've never given a friend or colleague tens of thousands of pounds. So I will leave the rest up to your imagination. For the most part, you have shown us great understanding, commitment, and compassion when we needed it. Just occasionally, you have also been the most determined, uncompromising, and wildly unpredictable opponent I have ever witnessed. <laughs> and I say this having spent the year before the NBA fighting the Taliban. <laughs> been tireless and seemingly unending, and your investigations equally so. <laughs> it has, as we say in England, sometimes been a game of two halves, but thank you very much indeed for your efforts. The last group, group who ought to be thanked is the most important one at all, of all. I'm talking of course about the student body. I have been awed since the day I got here, and I'm still awed now. For some of you, it is simply because you are here, because you have transported yourselves and often your families for thousands of miles to do this MBA while I have yet to fully move out of my parents' house. <laughs> because you can argue and debate in the English language with the kind of effortless fluency which many of your Australian classmates can only agree on. Because you have had incredible ideas and started your own amazing businesses while I could only fling myself, weeping with gratitude, at the very first job I was offered. <laughs> I have been humbled by the strength and spirit of your national mafias, which crossed the boundaries of street, study group and corporate finance cheat sheet with such fluid ease, while all that unites your British classmates is the fact that none of them try to rent a flat in Baker Street, and they all speak French like a six-year-old. <laughs> but our most sincere thanks really ought to go to those in the student body who've done so much to help their classmates with no appreciation save uh, the... Uh, oh God, sorry. <laughs> But they've done so much for no reward, uh, save the appreciation of their peers. Uh, and I, for one, own practically everything. I did not pass DMD because I know anything about statistics. I passed because Amal did, and she didn't mind explaining it to me. I didn't get a job because I watched a screencast about CV workshops. I got a job because Adam and Julia put hours into running a consulting club. And I did not party more and have more fun than at any time since my early 20s, because the Windsor is a particularly affordable pub. <laughs> I did so because Andrew Bragg wasn't having much luck meeting girls. <laughs> I 
and so he puts himself out every Thursday night for a year to serve us free drinks. <laughs> because there are so many of them in this class, we sometimes forget how rare people like this are. But they are rare, and I for one will miss their enthusiasm more than anything else about this past two years. As for the future, you've had plenty of that already, and I do not feel qualified to dish out guidance on what to do or how to behave. All I can say is that if you carry on being the kinds of people you have been for the last two years, you will not go far wrong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the class of MBA 2014, thank you very much indeed.